Professor Steiner here, and what I want to talk about today is the difference between use of the clenched fist and the open hand. As far as close combat is concerned, the open hand offers an enormous number of natural weapons that are superior to the clenched fist, and I'm going to go over the reasons why. Now, the clenched fist is the most commonly thought of weapon. As a matter of fact, there are certain styles of karate, uh, Kenpo karate, Goju karate, uh, Mudok Kwan, Taekwondo, that use as part of their symbol the clenched fist. However, the clenched fist has many weaknesses as a weapon. And one of the reasons you want to bear in mind why it's used so widely in sport is because as a weapon, it's relatively safe to hit people with, particularly if you're using the kind of blows, regular punching that's used in sparring. Uh, I remember when I was in Chengdu Kwan Taekwondo, we sparred every night and we only used the fist as the hand weapon. We were trained to use the open hand when we used the striking post. We were trained to use it in the hiung or kata, but it was virtually unused, maybe occasionally in one or two step sparring. And that's it. Usually it was the closed fist. That was the basic weapon. And with the closed fist, Every once in a while, we had physical contact. It wasn't deliberate. Nobody wanted to hurt anybody, but inadvertently you'd have contact and it was invariably not serious. And this was amongst black belts who occasionally punched each other. So I would, I would say that if you're in a classical martial art and you're not training for self-defense per se, stick with what you're doing I have no quarrel with it, but if you are training for self-protection, shift your focus to the open hand primarily. Restrict the clenched fist to the solar plexus, the sternum, the hypogastrium, the bladder, the testicles, the lower area, the pubic area of the body, and perhaps the kidney if someone's back is towards you, perhaps attacking someone you are trying to defend and you want to stun them momentarily so you can snap a chokehold on them. But uh, as far as using the clenched fist as your basic hand weapon, forget it. Now, once again, if we look at the World War II methods, we can see that it was recognized and it was recognized because it was demonstrated and proven time and again in combat, that the edge of the hand blow and the chin jab were decidedly superior weapons in close combat. The tiger's claw, which is really, the tiger's claw is a chin jab formed hand delivered straight into the face where the fingertips hit the face and then the palm collapses into the face delivering a harder blow. It's a very good strike, Tiger's Claw. That was about the only other open hand strike that was emphasized in World War II. But there are many ways to use the open hand. There's the chin jab, of course, and only a fool would doubt the effectiveness of the chin jab. I have had a number of medical doctors who were my students, and when I showed them the chin jab, they winced and said, uh, I know in one case, the doctor said to me, do you realize what that'll do to somebody? To which I replied, yes, and I smiled. The chin jab is an excellent blow. The open hand chop is an excellent blow. The fingertip thrust, extending the fingers and thrusting them into the eyes, or the throat, is a very good technique. Fairbairn developed a method of fingertip jabbing in which the fingers are formed in a manner similar to a cobra's head. And in that position, and you could try it yourself, if you jab into your hand, 
you can jab pretty hard, harder than you can jab with the fingertips extended. And there are some people who have very strong fingers. They can use the straightened fingers to other parts of the body, but I don't recommend it. I recommend the straight fingertip thrust to the eyes or throat only. The fingertip jab is very effective against the eyes, the bridge of the nose, and the testicles in an upward jabbing action. Um, the palm cupped is extraordinarily effective in an ear box blow. Now this can be delivered simultaneously or individually from the front or from the back. When it's delivered with a single hand, when it's delivered in a whipping blow, it serves both to strike the head and turn the head and the arm is cocked for a return chop. Very good way to strike somebody. And you can't hurt your hand. In the event that your opponent is wearing a motorcycle helmet or something, obviously striking the head may be a little less effective if you hit the helmet, but it's not going to hurt your hand if you use an open hand. Punch at a helmeted head with a clenched fist, and uh, your fist is likely to be on the losing end of the uh, proposition. The open hand can be used very effectively against small target areas that would be very difficult to attack with a clenched fist. For example, the eyes. The eyes are primary targets in self-defense. Uh, one, one technique, and I recommend, even if your main style of training is judo, or you're a boxer or a wrestler, if you want to cultivate an action that's effective for self-defense, extend your fingers and just practice thrusting into the eyes rapidly by surprise without a telegraphing movement. Just bring your hands up, hey, come on, I don't want any trouble. And from that position, you can thrust immediately without warning, you hit a good target, you will not hurt your hands. You can't attack the eye effectively with a fist. If you go after the eye, the brow and the cheekbone protects the eye. And this is why the phenomenon of a black eye occurs. A black eye has very little to do with the eye. It has to do with the bony area protecting the eye. Use fingertips into the eyes, the fingertip jab into the eyes, Throw any object uh, or objects into the eyes, sand, dirt, water, coffee, liquor, whatever's, whatever's available to you at the time. Attack the eyes. But the open hand will do it when you're relegated to the use of a natural weapon only. The heel of the hand. Now, in American Combato, we teach the heel of the hand in all sorts of various moves. The first blow taught, of course, is the chin jab smash. The straight heel palm is also an excellent blow. The inverted heel palm to the liver or the spleen is an excellent strike. Many ways to use the heel palm. The overhead circular heel palm and that overhead circular blow is derived in our system from Rocky Marciano's style of overhand punching. You want to see somebody who hits very hard, who uses boxing, Look at some of the fights of Rocky Marciano. He was not a very big man. He was like a tank. He was a powerhouse. He depended upon that overhand right with a clenched fist. And even though he wore gloves, he often broke his thumb. You won't break anything except perhaps the skull of the attacker, that overhand circular blow. A whipping heel palm blow delivered with the body weight behind it to the temple or jaw hinge or neck. Be sure to let your elbow flex slightly so you don't hyperextend the elbow joint. This blow delivered will never hurt your hand and it will cause a very severe trauma to the target once struck. The eagle's claw or what I call the fingertip claw at the throat, a very effective way to attack the throat in a, with the fingers in a pincher-like grip, high, 
where there's no muscle protection. If you try to claw the throat low, you may dig your fingers into the muscles of the neck. And if you've got somebody with a strong neck, he's not even going to be bothered by it. But if you lock on with what I call the throat lock, using either the index finger, the middle finger, the index and middle finger, all three fingers and the thumb, whatever you feel the most comfortable with, if you lock on to that thyroid cartilage, let your fingers join behind and yank out, that will be a lethal blow. A person who has his windpipe torn out like that must get a tracheotomy immediately or he will die. Now, obviously, you don't use anything like that except in a situation, for example, if you're a lady, you're being assaulted by somebody intent on forcible rape, uh, attempted kidnapping, somebody using a knife or a gun, a member of a group that's attacking you. Anytime you find yourself fighting for your life, you'd use a technique like that. And the open hand permits you to use it. Even a child can use that against a large man if she doesn't go up against his neck muscles, because this is the weakest part of the neck. The chop, the half fist, pass beautifully under the jaw. The fist doesn't. The fist connects with the jaw. If you're a boxer or a high-level black belt in karate and you train constantly with a striking post, a punch to the jaw is effective. But a chop to the windpipe, carotid artery, vagus nerve area, jugular vein area is a hundred times more effective and a 10-year-old girl can deliver that against a grown man and get a good result. The half fist, very effective against the throat and against the side of the neck. Grabbing hand, just opening your hand and grabbing. Now that can be used, for example, after an ear box, just grab the ears after compressing them. It could be used individually. Or you can just, as Professor Bryans has demonstrated in one of his excellent videos on technique, what we call the bow and arrow. Grab the ears and that will give you at least one ear trophy. I'm just joking about that. Well, maybe not. The fact of the matter is the open hand is an excellent weapon. Practice, you don't need to be in the dojo to practice. And here I'd like to mention something. Right now as this is being produced, the entire world is in the throes of this coronavirus phenomenon. And the word is stay at home. Uh, most gyms are closed. Most martial arts schools are closed. And even those who were not primarily training at home are now relegated to training at home if they're going to train at all. And this is a marvelous opportunity. If you've got our DVDs, work hard on them at home. Train at home. This, uh, obviously, we hope that that virus disappears, that it's cured, that a cure is found, that it's gone as soon as possible. But while you are relegated to training at home, take advantage of it. Spend an hour of training. Spend two hours if you're interested enough. And these open hand blows, as well as your other techniques, are perfect for practicing on your own at home. Take advantage of this. Hopefully, you and your family will be safe. We wish you that. And um, hopefully, you'll take advantage of this unfortunate situation insofar as you can to benefit yourself through training at home. Thank you.